Den här veckan besöker hundra astronauter Sverige under sin årliga konferens med organisationen Association of Space Explorers. Hela veckan är fullspäckad av aktiviteter. Rymdstyrelsen arrangerade en halvdag då astronauterna fick möta allmänheten. Bland annat besökte de 20 000 elever på 40 skolor i Mälardalen, men också riksdagen och kulturhuset i Stockholm. Här förklarade Chris Hadfield bland annat hur kroppen påverkas av att leva en längre tid i tyngdlöshet. Alex is going to help me answer this question. Come on up, Alex. Nice to meet you, Alex. Thank you for asking me. Nice shirt. And his heart is constantly like a conveyor belt, lifting blood up to his head and gravity shoving it down to his feet. Really complicated system. So that as soon as Alex gets adapted to space, all of that kind of changes and you float and you get a whole different shift of fluid and, and, and your balance system changes. You see, you see, there's nothing magic about space. It's about exploration. It's about um, trying to learn things that we don't understand yet. And pretty much everything that exists is in space. There's only a tiny, tiny little bit of things that exist that are actually here on Earth. The vast, huge, unbelievable majority of everything lies beyond our atmosphere. And the curiosity of that is, is worldwide. And it hasn't changed in 10,000 years. People look up and they wonder, why do the stars twinkle? And why is the sun hot? And why is the moon gray? And what is that red planet? And are we alone? And none of that has changed. Um, and, and the fundamental curiosity that drives us to explore is just basic to being human. Samantha Cristoforetti berättade hur det kändes att vara den europe som spenderat allra längst tid i rymden och hur astronauterna fikar ombord på rymdstationen. Well, for me, it was an amazing experience. <clears throat> and uh, the fact that you get a chance to be in space for such a long time, um, actually, it really makes the space station your home. Um, and it makes Earth that you look at every day for 200 days from the window of your backyard. As you probably learned during this week's speech, Swedish people are very fond of our uh, coffee break, fika. <laughs> And you brought the fika to space with the espresso machine. So how are the coffee breaks on the ISS? <laughs> well, they definitely have become more interesting, the space of fika, <laughs> um, thanks to this uh, chance to this machine, yeah. So for the first time, we were able to really brew espresso. Um, it's not quite the same as, you know, the, the one, the hot coffee that you get uh, in a bar, but it was a big improvement to the instant coffee that I had been drinking for five months before that. Kiri Kolman beskrev inspirerande den härliga känslan av att bo och sväva runt på rymdstationen. Men hur många av de ungdomar hon träffar kommer att jobba med rymden i framtiden? I don't know, but it's the possibility that is so important. There's a picture of myself that I show when I talk at schools and it's uh, my crew and I and we are meeting President Obama. And it just so happens that all the guys are wearing dark suits and I'm wearing a bright color. So I stick out very much in this picture. And what I, I use this photograph to explain to the kids that no one knew when I was their age that I would be in a picture like this. And so we have to actually take care of all of them. We have to make sure they're all ready. Not necessarily, not necessarily that they're going to be astronauts or even designers and, and, and engineers in the space program, but it's our responsibility to make sure they're ready for the future And for that, all of them need math and science and engineering and communication skills and, and the will to be, to be helpful, to realize that it is up to us to take good care of our planet. How do you like Sweden? I like Sweden. Jag bodde i Norge i, uh, i ett år, i 879. Jag liker man gott här i, här i Sverige, i, i Norge också. 